Growing up in San Francisco has been way safer than growing up other places because we have that bubble. And it's still that bubble of it's okay to kind of be whatever you want to. You can let your freak flag fly here, which I really appreciate, but it's still not the same. Autism is a lifelong disorder. You are born with it, you die with it. Autistic children grow up to be autistic adults, and that's just the reality of it. So as an adult with autism, I'm here to challenge people's idea of what autism is. And my journey is not everyone's journey because every autistic child is different, but there is hope. My background has heavy roots in the Bay Area, in San Francisco. I was born in San Diego, California, and was adopted out to San Francisco when I was about 17 months old. I've been here ever since. Um, I bounced around a little bit in high school, but I've always been here in the Bay. The neighborhood school is the amazing brainchild of Kiva Meyer, who's our wonderful and fearless leader. We are an inclusive preschool, which means that we cater to everyone. We don't turn anyone away. We take every child, regardless of race, creed, religion, or ability. It doesn't matter, we're here for you. The most common thing that I hear in my adult life is, oh, but you don't seem like you have autism, but you seem so normal, right? Yeah, that's 26 years of really, really, really hard work and like constant therapies and things that I still do. I was one of the first open adoptions in California for an LGBT couple. I was adopted by two of them. They split up when I was about four. One of them is partnered, the other one is not. Not. Um, that makes three, and then my biological mother, who's also a lesbian. Um, <laughs> a very queer family. Growing up with queer parents, especially in the 90s, was odd because I had the San Francisco bubble to protect me and everything here was safe. I was bullied very infrequently, but all in all, it was, it was relatively normative. Every school that I went to, there was at least one other family that had moms or dads. I never really felt isolated or alone. I have known for virtually my entire life, I was not suspended, but kindly asked to not ever bring it up again in first grade my desire to have a sex change. But the school that I went to really had no idea how to handle me. One of my parents is a little bit gender non-conforming, so it's like I, I wasn't alone. But they fought me, they questioned, because that's what parents do. My parents wanted me to be safe, they wanted my life to be easy, and when you have all of the like neural diversity challenges that I have to manage, that was just one more to add to it. I was a weird kid. Uh, <laughs> I had my core group of like very tight, like three friends. When we look at autism, we characterize it by like lack of eye contact. This thing that I'm doing now where I'm looking away from the camera is for my own comfort, right? Faces are confusing. We recognize that it's, it's a lack of mirror neurons in your brain working properly, which are the things that allow you to kind of experience empathy or recognize where somebody else is coming from or to kind of understand that like, oh, okay, this body language means that, right. But at its core, autism is a social disorder. It's a neurological disorder that people are born with and it's a big, big, big spectrum. <laughs> It wasn't until I was a teenager that I heard the word autism in reference to myself and I rejected it immediately. My symptoms of autism have gotten a lot better as I've gotten older, but when I was younger it was paired with a lot of early childhood trauma, there was a lot of rage. I was very loud. I took up a lot of space and it was mostly because taking up space let everybody else know where I existed in the world. I didn't like to talk to people really and then when I did I overshared. So I was a difficult child to be around. So friends that I had were very close. Even as an adult, they're friends who won't leave me when I get into those dark places. I click with our atypical kiddos a little bit more than some teachers do. In experiences, I remember what it was like to be five years old and not wanting to have anybody touch me because it literally hurt. Getting aggressive because it was too loud. I remember throwing chairs at people because I couldn't regulate my own emotions, right? And it did not mean that I'm a bad kid. It just meant that I couldn't cope. I grew up in a family of behavioral psychologists. I got therapy from all sides, and I got the brain development point of view from all sides pretty early. I've also done like intensive treatment programs where I've like, lived in centers, group homes, things like that, because I've needed a lot of help in my life to get to where I am, and that's okay. I recognize that my experience is just a very small picture of that, um, and not everybody is in a position to have a family that's this supportive, but there is also a community that's incredibly helpful and wonderful and open and there for you in your moments of need. So it was like two or three years of conversations before I finally was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do this, and I went out and 
got my prescription for hormones and started my transition medically, um, even though I had already been presenting and living my life as male at that point in my life. I have a two-year-old. She's lovely. She was very unexpected in my life. I'd been dating the, the person who I'm now married to, who's my husband, for about two years and then started gaining weight and wasn't sure. So I went and talked with the doctor at my clinic and my doctor said, well, testosterone is basically birth control, so there's no way you can be pregnant. That happened three times at two different clinics. We found out at six and a half months that I was pregnant. Access to general care is really limited when you're a trans person. My whole mission is to kind of normalize adults like me. I think I've finally found my calling in early intervention, which is here, it's kind of what we do. I think that the access to care for parents is intentionally confusing. And I know, at least when I did the, the like prospective autism search for my own child, I just kept getting sent in circles. And it was very hard to find anyone who had an answer for me. We are a place where children are allowed to be children, and that's very quickly forgotten when you have a child who's disabled. I always out myself as an autistic adult. I find that it's very helpful for people to look at where can your child go. And you went in the trash. How I'm choosing to help is to give children that would normally not be allowed to be children in the same respect, kids that have three times as much work to do as their, their peers or kids who do odd things like speech therapy. How do you explain speech therapy to a three-year-old? You know, how do you explain that to their whole class when everyone's curious? Like, I want that to be a normal experience. I was working on a certificate and kind of getting my early childhood credits before I started working here, and we did a section on transgender inclusion, really LGBTQIA inclusion, which is a big issue in San Francisco because we attract lots of queer families. And the teacher approached me and said, I, I don't really feel comfortable or qualified to talk about this from like a cisgendered straight person's perspective. Would you mind talking a little bit about your own experience? And I was like, absolutely. So I'm, I'm now just one of the guest speakers in that particular class at City College. I love that I grew up here. I love what San Francisco represents. It's the idea of leaving here has never really even occurred to me. This has been and will always be home, but it's a place that I now have to fight for. And it's a place that needs to be fought for, to bring it back to what it used to be, to, to allow all of those little kids that come from really unsafe environments to move somewhere safe. What I've done with my life is work to make all of those situations better, to bring a little bit of light to all those kinds of issues that we're still having, hoping to expand into a little bit more of a resource center. And this resource center would be for those new parents who've gotten that diagnosis. And we want to be this one centralized place that allows parents to breathe for a second. I would love to empower from the bottom up, from the kid level, and from the top down, from the teacher level. So many things I would love to do that that are all about changing people's mind about certain communities, like the transgender community or the autistic community. I would like for my daughter to know that there's no wrong way to go through life, really. I think everybody has pitfalls and everybody gets stuck. Everybody experiences pain and grief and sadness and that all of those things are temporary. <laughs> what are you doing?